alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear viewers, sisters and brothers. Welcome to Fiqh Question Time from Safir TV. It's our great pleasure to have with us our greatest scholar, um, Sayyid Muhammad Al Musawi, one of the greatest scholar in the UK. And Alhamdulillah, we are really pleased to have him with us. So in this um, program, we have a general question. It's generic. Um, show and we have uh, our great scholar with us Sayyid Muhammad Al Musawi I take this opportunity to say salam to him and then inshallah we go through the questions you have sent to us and uh, of course we have as well some questions uh, prepared for our great scholar Sayyid Muhammad Al Musawi Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyid Al Aziz Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May Allah bless you and bless all our brothers and sisters and may Allah enlighten us with more knowledge and enlighten our hearts with more love to him and to his most beloved servant, Muhammad and his holy progeny, Ahlul Bayt. Just to remind our brothers and sisters that seeking knowledge is one of the most important acts and one of the most important worships Allah likes those who seek knowledge Allah likes those who teach Allah likes those who ask and Allah likes even those who listen and Allah likes those who love this procedure of imparting knowledge. So the mu'min tries always to be in touch with knowledge, tries always to ask whatever he needs to ask. The mu'min, by asking and by inquiring, is not only gaining more knowledge but also gaining more rewards and more degrees in the paradise inshallah now very good as you mentioned the importance of the knowledge is as well the first verse of the holy quran is starting with iqra as you mentioned and as well, we have this verse in the Holy Quran: "La yastawi ladina yalamuna wa ladina la yalamun." Ahsan to mashallah. Those who know can never be like those who don't know. And as well, we have a hadith of our great Prophet. He says about the importance of the seeking knowledge. Utlu al ilm min al mahdi ila al lahad. Ahsan to Sayyidina al Aziz. So we have some questions as well about Hajj and some question, general questions. We receive from our dear viewers. So uh, we start with um, using or consuming the fish gelatin, Satan. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a question from one of our uh, dear viewers. It's written, it is allowed to consume the fish gelatin. Is it allowed? Anything from the fish or any, you know, let us start with that all the, what is called sea animals or water animals. From water animals, we are allowed to eat only the fish which has got scales on it. Mm -hmm. Even if it had and now the scales are gone, we take it as it has scales on it. Any fish which has no scales at all on it is haram. Okay. For example, shark is haram. Water snakes are haram. haram. Why? Because they don't have scales. scales. So, fish which has got scales are haram. Halal to eat. No matter who catches them, no need for a Muslim to catch the fish. Muslim or non-Muslim non -Muslim. in this matter, 
of catching or fishing are equal. But we have to be sure that the fish has got scales and second condition that the fish should not die inside the water. Okay. If it is outside the water, it's okay. If the fish died inside the water for any reason, for example, some people put dynamite. Some people in some countries, of course, most of the countries don't allow this. It is illegal. But in some countries, say for example, if you know that in some area they are putting dynamite and killing the fish and then collecting it. Inside water, yes? This fish is haram. Mm -hmm. So, two conditions for every fish to be halal. Number one, to have scales on it. Number two, not to die inside the water. Said that. Sorry to stop you here. About a scale, is there any medical reason that a fish of should course, have? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. In fact, the scientific re researches have proved that the fish which does not have scales on it mm -hmm usually eat the filth, the dirt, okay. the dead bodies, while the fish which has got scales does not eat any filth, any dead body, Good. any dirt, but only eats the plants of the water, which is clean food. So, so another thing about these skills, how many percent per, or percentage of a skill should no be able? No percentage. Even for a small part of the fish, small part, even small part of it has got scales that should be enough. So, in principle, we know now what is halal fish and what is not halal fish. We say the fish which has got scales, which did not die inside the water. This fish is halal. Now, other sea and water animals like crab, like oyster, mm -hmm. like other prawns, prawns yes. lobster, mm -hmm. the answer, out of all the animals living in the water, only the prawns are halal. Okay. Only the shrimps. Shrimps. Only, not lobster. Some people think that lobster is a big shrimp. No, lobster is a different animal. Mm -hmm. Only the shrimps, or also it is called prawns, are halal to eat. Any other animal, like crab, like shells, like oyster, like ink fish, yes. like any other any other animal in the water is not allowed at all. So we come to the result that out of all the sea and water animals, we are allowed to eat the fish with scales and the prawns. Now about the gelatin, gelatin. from fish the gelatin, yes. fish. Whether it is gelatin or oil, oil or any other product, we see the origin of this product. Okay. If it came from halal fish, means fish with scale and which did not die inside the water, then any product from it is halal. What about if it's written just fish oil or fish gelatin? You should know from which type of fish because it can be from fish which is non-halal. We cannot eat any fish oil. We cannot eat any fish gelatin. We must know from which type of fish to be sure that it was taken from halal 
type of fish which has the fish which has on it scales. Usually nowadays, in, in uh, for example, pharmacies, uh, you, you can find like, like this type of uh, medicines. They are like gelatin, so they use like for vitamin D yeah, or whatever, other things. Yeah, antibiotics. Yeah, many medications are covered or they are contained in a capsule, which sometimes or most of the times made of gelatin. What is the situation with such gelatin? The answer. Gelatin can be vegetable gelatin. Okay. Vegetarian. But most of the gelatin, which is written only gelatin, only gelatin. means animal gelatin. Oh, it's not. A the animal gelatin can be halal if it was taken from halal animal. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, animal slaughtered in Muslim countries, say in Egypt, in Turkey, in Iran, in Pakistan. From such halal animals, when they take gelatin, that gelatin is halal as well. But if the gelatin was derived, mm -hmm. taken from non-halal animal, then the gelatin will be also non-halal. So normally in uh, different type of sweets, it's written, sometimes just it's written, as you mentioned, gelatin, or sometimes it's written, even we see it's written, for example, vegetable gelatin, even pork gelatin. So to pork gelatin, it's clear that it is, it is haram. So the, the question the majority of people they are asking is here, just gelatin, simple gelatin, if or beef is, gelatin. If it is vegetable gelatin, then it is clearly halal. Halal. If it is only gelatin, it means that mainly they use gelatin for animal gelatin. Animal gelatin, you have to see whether it was taken from halal animal, from Muslim country, mm -hmm. or non-halal animal, mainly if this gelatin is from non-Muslim country, then it is not allowed to consume. What about, for example, the majority of parts it's written, for example, if beef gelatin, what is your... Same, beef gelatin. If this beef was slaughtered in Muslim country, then the beef is halal. Then the gelatin of it is halal. But if the beef was slaughtered in, say, China, or any Muslim, a non-Muslim country, even in Europe, non-Muslim way of killing or slaughtering the animal does not make the animal halal. So it depends on the situation of the animal itself. Here, as I know, we have another question. It's regarding to the syrups or maybe tablets or capsules. Mm -hmm. uh, usually in syrups, it, the, the, the majority of syrups, it has some part, some percentage alcohol inside. So what is the, I mean, fiqh answer in this situation? Is it uh, halal or haram? Most of our ulama <coughs> say that any percentage of alcohol, you know, alcohol has got two types, intoxicant and poisonous. Mm -hmm. The alcohol which is intoxicant which causes I mean, dizziness. Good. Any percentage of that is haram. Is haram. But Ayatollah Sistani, Good. may Allah grant him long and healthy life. Inshallah. He has his verdict in this matter that if the percentage of the alcohol in the medicine or in the material is nominal, means 1% to 2%. Okay. That can be permissible because it will be consumed with the majority of the medicine. Means 1% with 99% will not remain. It will, will not be, affect. Yeah. 
But the reason of using, sorry, say, Zena, the reason of using this alcohol is to, to keep it um, always like fresh, to keep it uh, hygienic, is it, isn't it? I don't know the reason. We don't know the reason. In fact, we have got hadiths that Allah never put cure in any haram. Anything haram can never be cured. But, but say that alcohol itself, I'm not for eating. What about, for example, if we have injured part or wounded part, usually they use alcohol to clean it. A cleaning means applying alcohol on a wound or injury is completely allowed. Applying it is allowed. The point is to consume it. We are allowed to apply any material on our body, even if it is nudges material. Okay. No harm. But consuming it needs to be sure that it is tahir. So in this matter of the percentage of alcohol, I said majority of our ulama say any percentage is not permissible. Ayatollah Sistani says, very small, minute, very small of 1% to 2% can be permissible. Uh, we have another thing, actually, it was mentioned to me as well that uh, even one of our close friends, he has uh, tuberculosis, the, the very bad coughing. So the doctor prescribed for him a type of the uh, syrup, which the amount of alcohol was too much, but it was prescribed by a doctor. What happens if something prescribed by a doctor, but the, the prescription might have alcohol inside? What is the if answer? The, if the medicine has got an amount of alcohol which is considerable, then it is not allowed. Clearly because we have got clear evidence that Allah did not put cure of any medical condition in alcohol. So okay. if the percentage is minimal, then okay, according to Atullah Sistani, if it is no, not minimal, but it is considerable, then not allowed. Okay. We, we go to some questions uh, about Hajj, Sayyid Al-Aziz. Yes, yes. Um, we have a question from uh, one of our dear viewers. It's written, if I have uh, taken loan from my company where I am working and, and have still not completed my installments, example here he mentioned, my loan is, is still not paid, some balances is to be paid, is it permissible for me to perform Hajj? Yes. If your company... If your company has an agreement with you to take from you in installments okay. and you are not late in the payment of any installment, so you know and they know that you are paying regularly, then you can go for Hajj. So it's okay without any problem. Good. But not... if someone has got a loan, from Mr. A. And Mr. A says, you are not allowed to go for Hajj before repaying me all my loan, all my money. Then in that case, the person cannot go for Wajib Hajj unless and until he repays that man who does not agree on him going for Hajj before receiving full repayment. If it could be that person or the company, yes? Any. Anything. Good. Another question is as well about Hajj. Uh, here is written, I would appreciate if you kindly tell me the necessary conditions uh, by which a person becomes mustati'ah. Istita'ah means the ability. Okay, here, let, let me finish this question, Sayyidina. Financially and bodily capable, as he, he has written. Uh, I am asking uh, this question because I really want to know whether or not I am qualified for Hajj. Okay. 
Istita'a means the ability. The ability is not only financial. Mm -hmm. Of course, financial is very important. Of if there is no enough money to go for Hajj, the matter, is, the matter is over. No ability to go for Hajj. But if someone has got enough money to go and come back, not only to go, to come back, come as, back well. as well. I mean, if someone has got a ticket for just one way to go for Hajj, what about coming back? Yeah. He should be able to obtain the travel expenses, food expenses, staying expenses. And when he comes back, even he should not come back with zero money. With zero money. <laughs> he should not come back as a poor person. So if the financial ability is there, then other conditions, for example, he should be able to have a valid passport. He should be able to have the requirement of visa because okay. there are many millions, in fact, of Muslims today who have money and have passport, but they don't have visa because the visa for Hajj in many countries like Iraq, Iran, it's difficult. India, Pakistan, Indonesia, by draw. Yes, by draw, and you have to wait 10 years, maybe more than 10 years. Yeah, so by draw. And if his name didn't come, so he has no visa. So part of the ability is to have a visa. Some ladies have money and have passport and also can have a visa, but they have got small children mm. to look after. Good. If they go for Hajj, their children will suffer a lot. Yes. yes. In that case, no, don't cause your children, the little kids, not elders. No, those who are grown up, grown up. But those children who are dependent on the mother should not be left alone or left with someone else if the mother leaving them for Hajj can cause them considerable harm and damage. So the ability from all dimensions of it, if the person is a female, female cannot go alone for Hajj. She has to go with a company okay. like Husband, group, brother, caravan, yeah. caravan, means group of people, okay, good. whether group of ladies or one of her mahrams, like father, like brother, like husband. husband. If not father, husband, brother, son, even a group of ladies going, she can go with them in a way that she must remain safe. The travel should be away from danger. Good. Thank you very much. We have a question, another question as well about um, Hajj. Uh, Sayyidina here is written, uh, can a person wear black ihram? Is it possible or no? Ihram, the color of ihram is mustahab, recommended to be white. Okay. But not wajib, recommended for men and for women. Good. But if, say, a woman, she does ihram with her black cloth, is it wrong? Not wrong. But for a man to wear black ihram okay. is makruh, not recommended disliked but not haram mm -hmm. not haram good thank you very much said now we, we have another question it's about writing the will yeah um a question is here uh, about will does the will should be um written or it could be oral is it possible to be uh, oral as well or it should be written to be accepted in Islam, the will 
does not need to be written to be valid. No doubt, writing it is much better. But if someone made a will verbally that after my death, give one third of my property to good cause, Masjid, Husseinia, orphanage, hospital, water, any good cause, without writing it, but he said it. When he said it willingly, not joking, when he was not during when he was out of senses, mm -hmm. no, he was in his senses, and he said it willingly, then that is a valid will. Is it necessary witness or no? No. Witness is not compulsory unless it is being challenged. Okay. If someone else says that he said something different, then everyone should bring his witness. But in general, the will can be verbally, but it is much better to keep it in writing. Yet. Even now, the ulama are making their wills in writing. In writing. So, better to have it in writing. Thank you very much, Sayyidina. So, we are at the end of our show. Uh, inshallah, definitely we'll have uh, this type of uh, questions inshallah, in our next program. Dear viewers, so we, we will be very happy to have your questions. So you, you, as you, you know, our program is recorded. So you can uh, send your questions. Uh, you have our numbers. And inshallah, definitely we will raise your questions with our great start. Uh, Allah Sayyid Muhammad Al-Musawi will see you in next program. Thank you very much.